I came across a satirical but serious quote. If it doesn't show up on imaging, it's either cured or imaginary. The CT scan is the new oracle. In other words, if the CT scan doesn't see it, it doesn't exist. The CT scan has become the new oracle, like the ancient oracle of Delphi, or for us Indians, the sacred rishis, believed to deliver divine, error-free answers. But here's the problem. Modern medicine, with all its molecular, wizardry and high resolution imaging often accepts only what's visible as real. Everything else dismissed as a problem in patient's head. This mindset, while efficient, can overshadow clinical judgment, patient experience and conditions that don't fit neatly into a diagnostic box. Hi, I'm Gaurav and you're watching Gut Instincts. So today we ask, can a gallbladder without visible stones still cause pain? Let's dive in. Believe it or not, yes, a gallbladder can be painful even when scan shows no stones. Two conditions are often responsible, functional gallbladder disorder and acalculus cholecystitis. Let's unpack the first one, functional gallbladder disorder. This is the poster child for our opening quote. Previously called biliary dyskinesia, it mimics classic gallstone symptoms but without any stones or structural abnormalities on imaging. It's a motility disorder. The gallbladder looks normal but it doesn't contract properly to release bile. Why? Sometimes the bile is too thick, super saturated with cholesterol. Other times, the gallbladder muscles themselves are poorly coordinated. The result? Pain. Specifically, biliary colic, a constant ache in the mid or upper right abdomen, often triggered by a fatty meal, quite similar to that seen in gallstones. We have covered that pain in detail in our video on gallstone symptoms. Check that out if you haven't already. The pain arises from pressure inside the gallbladder because it doesn't empty properly after a rich fatty meal. The gallbladder's muscles aren't coordinating well. That's the cause. Diagnosing functional gallbladder disorder is tricky. It's a diagnosis of exclusion. Meaning, we rule out everything else first that can cause pain in the upper abdomen. Blood tests, scans, clinical history which should be taken in detail. All must be carefully reviewed. If the patient develops sludge or tiny stones due to poor gallbladder motility during the course of this evaluation, the diagnosis becomes clearer as these abnormalities become apparent in the scans. But without these visible findings, the diagnosis is often a mystery. Let me share a personal story. Back in 2021, during the second COVID wave, I was consulted by a 45-year-old gentleman in a small town. He had been suffering from Brickan upper abdominal pain for six years. The previous scans, multiple of them, were all clear. The diagnosis was unclear and his suffering persisted. I had some understanding of functional gallbladder issues, but I was not very clear conceptually. His case pushed me to revisit textbooks, dig deeper and connect the dots. We took a calculator risk, performed gallbladder surgery and it worked. He became pain-free. It was humbling. Until then, I had done multiple gallbladder surgeries. I thought I was an expert in gallbladder disease, but I realized doing a procedure repeatedly does not automatically make you an expert on all the issues of that organ. It's a misunderstanding that's pretty widespread, even with doctors. It makes you skilled in that procedure, period. True mastery demands a deeper understanding, constant learning and humility, far more than a simple memorization of key, some key points. Still. Many aspects of that organ will remain a mystery and we can only hope that future studies will provide clarification. 20 years ago, during my undergraduate training, gut microbes were seen as useless germs just hanging around in our intestines. Today, they are treated like tiny health heroes, helping with digestion, immunity, even mood and brain function. The same bugs we used to ignore are now getting great for keeping us alive and well, imagine being stuck in outdated thinking, prescribing antibiotics blindly and unknowingly attacking the very microbes that protect and heal us. There is an enormous difference between a technical surgeon and a clinically oriented surgeon. One of my surgical mentors, Professor Gurpit, 
tried to teach me this difference, which I can understand now. Here's a simple analogy to understand this. Think of cricket. Just because someone's a top class batsman doesn't mean they understand the whole game. Yet, teams often make their best batsman the captain, mistaking skill for strategy. In high pressure matches, what you really need is a calm, composed leader with a broad view of the game. Even then, success isn't guaranteed. I, as a fan, am still hoping the team's management eventually understands this. In medicine, we often make the same mistake, assuming that performing a procedure many times makes someone an expert on that organ itself. But true clinical leadership, like good captaincy, demands more than technical skill. It requires strategy, judgment, and a deeper understanding of the entire field. And just like in cricket, even the best decisions won't guarantee a win every time. Now that we have digressed, let's refocus on gallbladder. So how do we test gallbladder contractility when scans look normal? Two options, fatty meal cholecystography and fatty meal functional ultrasound. These tests measure gallbladder volume before and after a fatty meal. The result, a percentage called the gallbladder ejection fraction. Low value may suggest poor contractility, but here's the catch. These tests aren't very reliable. Diagnosis still hinges on classic symptoms and ruling out other causes. There is no magic pill for this condition. Symptoms may settle on their own, so early surgery isn't advised. But if the pain is recurrent, lasting over three months or severe, then gallbladder remover may be necessary. Let's move on to the second problem. A gangless cholecystitis. This is a type of gallbladder inflammation that happens without any gallstones. Most cases of cholecystitis are caused by stones blocking the cystic duct. But A calculus cholecystitis is different and often more serious. Gallstones usually don't show up on scans in this condition. It tends to affect patients who are already critically ill, those recovering from major surgery, trauma, burns, sepsis or long ICU stays. Even prolonged fasting or intravenous feeding with TPN can increase the risk. The main reason? Reduced blood flow to the gallbladder wall, often due to dehydration, shock or critical illness. This leads to tissue injury and while bile stagnates during fasting, inflammation kicks in. Sometimes bacteria join the party and make things worse. A calculus cholecystitis is considered more dangerous than the stone related kind. Why? Because the blood supply to the gallbladder is compromised early on. This raises the risk of serious complications like gangrene, perforation, sepsis and shock. The symptoms are similar to regular cholecystitis but they are often hidden because the patient is already recovering from another illness. Diagnosis methods are also similar. We have covered these in detail in our videos on symptoms and diagnosis of gallstones. Do check them. A calculus cholecystitis is a medical emergency. It needs quick and careful treatment. Here's how we manage it. Supportive care with IV fluids, pain relief and antibiotics, gallbladder drainage. For unstable patients, we insert a tube through the skin into the gallbladder to drain the bile. Surgery, once the patient is stable, gallbladder removal is the definitive treatment. In some cases, surgery may be done right away if the patient can handle it. That wraps up the main points for today. Jeffrey Archer, one of the most famous English novelists of our time, said, few things are entirely black or white, but more often different shades of gray. And that's true in medicine too. A patient with gallstones may have pain from something else and someone with normal looking gallbladder may still have gallbladder pain. Life and diagnosis is rarely black and white. So here's my medical twist on Archer's quote. Diagnosis, like history, is rarely written in black and white. It's shaded in probabilities and human bias. Although controversial, functional gallbladder disorder is the reason for gallbladder surgery in up to 20% of adults and 50% of children in the US. In fact, gallbladder surgery for functional issues is three to four times more common in the US than in other developed countries. That suggests a possible overuse. In India, it's not a common diagnosis. And that's probably a good thing. But awareness is the key. 
because for patients truly affected by this problem, proper diagnosis and treatment can be life changing. Let me end with a timeless quote. Eyes do not see what the mind does not know. To truly see more, whether in medicine or in life, we must keep learning, questioning and expanding our understanding. Thanks for watching Gut Instincts. Until next time, stay curious, stay kind and trust your gut. Bye.